Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Manchester United football director John Murtough has confirmed that Manchester United have begun their search for a new permanent manager. Mauricio Potticino and Eric Ten Hag are the top candidates. Mauricio Potticino is the favourite to become Manchester United's next boss. Recently, Manchester United held talks with Mauricio Potticino. Reports from Spain said not so long ago that Potticino rejected Manchester United as he's waiting for Real Madrid. Real Madrid want Potticino to replace Carlo Ancelotti. Real Madrid are unhappy with Carlo Ancelotti. Potticino is expected to leave PSG at the end of the season. He's been in charge of PSG for over a year. His contract at PSG expires next year. Um, he has won a French Cup with them. Potticino has managed in the Premier League before, which is beneficial. Uh, before, he endured a five-and-a-half-year managerial tenure with Tottenham. Back in 2018, he got Tottenham to their first-ever Champions League final, and at one point, he almost won the league when he was Tottenham manager. Tottenham made a bad mistake sacking Potticino at the time. Before Tottenham, he managed Southampton. He only endured a short managerial tenure with Southampton. But he still managed to guide Southampton to their highest ever finish in the Premier League. So they're the clubs he's managed in the Premier League so far. And a long time ago, he managed Espanyol. Revert back to when Manchester United sacked Jose Mourinho. Manchester United should have got Potticino then, but the club decided to go with Solskjaer instead. <laughs> and as you all know, Ralph Rangnick and Richard Arnold won Eric Ten Hag to become Manchester United's next manager. And there's a lot of Manchester United fans that would like to see Eric Ten Hag get recommended in. I think Eric Ten Hag would be capable of winning trophies if he became Man United's next manager and he would suit the strappings of the club. You've got to admire the work he's done at Ajax. He's developed the young players well. He's won a couple of titles with them. Revert back to 2019, he got Ajax to the Champions League semi-finals. So there you go, and he's been the Ajax manager for over four years. Ajax appointed him in back in 2017, his contract at Ajax expires next year. Before Ajax, he managed Utrecht. Before then, he managed Bayern Munich's reserves, and before then, he managed Go Ahead. Eagles. You know, Manchester United are looking for the fifth permanent manager since Ferguson. Manchester United have sat four permanent managers since Ferguson, even though Man United are not really known as a sacking football club. The managers we've sat since Ferguson were sat David Moyes after 10 months. Uh, then we sat to Louis van Gaal after like two years. We did win the FA Cup under him. Then Manchester United sat to Jose Mourinho after two and a half years. Uh, Mourinho did enjoy one good season at Man United because he won three trophies in his first season. The three trophies he won was the Europa League, the EFL Cup and the Community Shield. But the reasons it didn't work out under Mourinho is because he had bad disputes with the board 
and bad disputes with the top players and last year Manchester United sat Ole Gunnar Solskjaer after almost three years in charge. Uh, Ralph Rangnick, um, he's been Manchester United's interim manager for around three months now. He is Manchester United's interim manager until the end of the season, then he is expected to take up a consultancy role for a further two years. Earlier on this season, it did mention that Rangnick wants the permanent Man United job. Like I say, I've got a lot of respect for Rangnick. I think he's a very good coach. The vast majority of German coaches are very good. Um, a long time ago, Rangnick taught Jurgen Klopp, and Jurgen Klopp is very good at Liverpool. Uh, before Manchester United, Rangnick was the head of sports and development at Lokomotiv Moscow. Uh, not so long ago, Rangnick was alongside Paul Mitchell. Uh, Paul Mitchell is at Monaco. Do you think Rangnick will recommend Paul Mitchell to work with him at Manchester United? Earlier on this season, Rangnick recommended Ewan Sharpin as an assistant coach and analyst. He also recommended Chris Armisen as an assistant coach and he recommended Saz Chalenzin as a sports psychologist. Rangnick as well has tried a few different formations since he came in. Obviously started off with the 4 2 formation, then he went with a 4-3-3 formation and a lot recently he's gone with that 4-2-3-1 formation. Rangnick's nearly managed 20 games in all competitions as Manchester United's interim manager. Unfortunately, Rangnick did not get backed in the January transfer window. And at the first, he got promised he was going to get backed. Man United enjoyed a very poor January transfer window because we didn't make any signings. Uh, Lingard and Henderson should have left in January but we blocked their exits. And we had the incident with Mason Greenwood uh, towards the end of January. Around eight players left Manchester United in January. Uh, Rangnick's aim is for Manchester United to finish in the top four this season. But finishing the top four this season wouldn't be a successful season for Man United. Manchester United drew with Watford 0-0 not so long ago, so that's put top four in doubt. You know, Man United are fourth at the moment, but Arsenal have three games in hand. Manchester United's only chance of a trophy this season is the Champions League. I'm very sceptical we'll win the Champions League. So it's going to be another trophy this season. Manchester United have not won a trophy since 2017. That's nowhere near good enough to our standards. And let me put into the equation, uh, none of this squad is Rangnick's. You know, he's inheriting players who other managers have brought in. Now, there is good players at Manchester United, but there's also inconsistent players as well. So, obviously, we have the best player in the world overall in Cristiano Ronaldo. But Ronaldo is out of form at the moment. He's only scored one goal in his last 10 games. And like I mentioned yesterday, Ralph Rangnick has major doubts about Cristiano Ronaldo. Rangnick wants to replace Ronaldo with a Sheeman. Ronaldo will leave Manchester United in the summer, especially if they fail to finish in the top four. 
Well, prior to the Leeds game, it said Manchester United will allow Cristiano Ronaldo to leave. Earlier on this season, it said Ronaldo was set to become Manchester United's new captain to replace Harry Maguire, but that's not going to happen now because Rangnick said that Maguire will remain Man United's captain until the end of the season. Since Ronaldo re-signed for Manchester United, he's got 15 goals in all competitions. He has over 800 goals in his career and Man United re-signed Ronaldo last summer for £20 million with add-ons included. His contract at Manchester United expires next year. There's an option of a further year. And he receives nearly £500,000 a week, so reflecting on that, he's the highest earner at the club at the moment. Ronaldo's won over 30 trophies in his playing career, including five Ballon d'Ors. <coughs> um, Anthony Alanga, um, he's a very good young player. Um, Ilanga came off the bench and scored a late equaliser against Atletico Madrid. He also scored in the 4-2 win against Leeds. Uh, Ralph Rangnick did say that Anthony Ilanga was close to leaving Manchester United. Earlier on this season, Ilanga got racially abused on social media because he missed a decisive penalty against Middlesbrough in the Cup. Elanga has been part of the club for a long time. He risen up our academy in that. He joined Manchester United's academy at the age of 12 and he's now 19, so he is still young. And Elanga's under contract to Man United until June 2026 as an option of a further year. Jaden Sancho, um, he's not done as well as a lot of Manchester United fans expected, but he has had his good games since he signed for the club. Uh, don't forget Jaden Sancho provided two assists in the 4-2 win against Leeds. Uh, revert back to when we had Solskjaer, we couldn't get the best out of Sancho because Solskjaer persistently played him out of position and there was quite a few games Sancho didn't even play in under Solskjaer. Uh, Sancho did enjoy four good years with Borussia Dortmund before he signed for Man United. Man United signed Sancho from Dortmund last summer, got him in a deal worth £78 million with add-ons included. Man United paid £73 million up front and Sancho's under contract to Man United until June 2026. There's an option of a further year. Marcus Rashford. He's a good player overall. But he has enjoyed a lot of poor games since he had that operation on his shoulder. Rashford missed the first two months of the season with that shoulder problem and revert back to earlier on this season, he had a leg injury. Rashford's contract at Manchester United expires next year. He has been part of the club for a long time, you know, he came up our academy in that, he's been a United player since the age of seven and he broke into our senior squad back in 2016 and since then he's gone on to make nearly 300 appearances in all competitions. Bruno Fernandes, um, he's one of our best players and he's certainly one of the best signings we've made since Ferguson retired. Um, <clears throat> Fernandez um, did have his chances in the game against Watford but unfortunately couldn't convert 
them chances. You know, Fernandez has had his good games this season, but on the other side of things, he's had a lot of bad games as well. I thought Fernandez was far superior last season to this season. Earlier on this season, Fernandez rejected a new contract at Manchester United. Bruno Fernandez contract talks are postponed until the summer. <clears throat> Fernandez is under contract with Man United until 2025. There's an option of a further year. He's been at Manchester United for two years, going from sport in Lisbon back in January 2020. Jesse Lingard, he's not good enough. Well, Lingard doesn't really get in the team anyway, but surprisingly, he started against Leeds at Ellen Road the other week. Lingard has been part of the club for a long time. He's risen up our academy and that. Um, he's out of contract at Man United in the summer. Like I mentioned earlier on in this video, he should have left Manchester United last month, but like I said, we've locked his exit last month. Um, January, it was Newcastle and West Ham that were battling it out to get him on loan. Uh, one matter, uh, don't have a great deal of a perception on him anymore because he doesn't get in the team. One matter lost his place in the team a while ago. He has had a good career though at Manchester United. Matt has made 277 appearances in all competitions and he's scored 51 goals. He's been at Manchester United for eight years, so reflecting on that, he's been a long-serving player. Manchester United got him from Chelsea back in 2014, got him for 37.1 million. I'm expecting Matt to leave in the summer because he's out of contract in the summer. Uh, Manchester United also have Paul Pogba. Uh, Pogba's a good player. He's not only a good player, he's an imperative player as well. He's done well in a lot of the games he's played in since he recovered from injury. But he hasn't been too good in his last couple of games, you know. He weren't that good against Watford. I do recall him having a good chance in that game and he was poor against Atletico Madrid in the Champions League. Earlier on this season, it said that Pogba is open to Premier League offers if he leaves Manchester United this summer. Pogba's out of contract at Man United in the summer. Earlier on this season, it said Pogba is open to staying at Man United beyond the end of his contract. Pogba is injury prone because he's endured quite a few injuries since he re-signed for the club. This season has been his sixth season at Manchester United since he re-signed. He's played over 200 games since he re-signed and he's won three trophies at the club so far. And Manchester United paid £89 million for Pogba, so reflecting on that, he's our most expensive signing at the moment. We had him when he was a lot younger under the Ferguson era, but had to let him go due to limited appearances. Uh, we got Scott McTominay, um, he's not good enough to represent the club. Um, I did say earlier on this season that McTominay was our best performer under Rangnick. Because he's had his good games under Rangnick. McTominay has been part of the club for a long time. Uh, revert back to 2020, he signed a new five-year contract with Man United. McTominay has played a lot of games alongside Fred in the centre midfield. Obviously, McTominay and Fred do not complement each other in the midfield. And Roy Keane mentioned that Man United will never be winning a title with Fred and McTominay as your midfielders. Uh, Fred um, is inconsistent. I think we need to consider offloading him in the summer. Uh, Fred, don't get me wrong, has had his good games under Rangnick. But that doesn't change my perception on him. 
Uh, Fred came on in the game against Leeds the other week and he scored our third goal. He beat Megale at his near post. It was a good finish, to be fair, but Megale should have saved it. Manchester United got Fred a few years ago from Shapton and S, got him for £50 million. Pounds. The man you Matic, not good enough. Well, Matic isn't one of our first choice midfielders. He's the only predominant centre defensive midfielder Manchester United have got. Matic did recently play against Watford and he played well, to be fair. Uh, not so long ago, Matic had a shin injury. Matic will leave Man United in the summer, he's out of contract in the summer. Manchester United got Matic from Chelsea back in 2017, got him for £40 million. So Matic has been at Man United now over four years. Uh, Edison Cavani, he's also good as well. Uh, Cavani's not available at the moment because he's out with injury. So he hasn't played for a while. Cavani's had a few injuries since he signed for the club. Cavani will leave Man United in the summer. He said earlier on this season that Cavani is expected to leave as a free agent in the summer. And Cavani prefers a move to La Liga. Manchester United got Cavani on a free transfer from PSG back in the summer of 2020. Luke Shaw, he's a good left-back overall. Um, he has struggled though in a lot of the games he's played in this season. Um, he's had some good games as well, but I thought he was far superior last season to this season. Luke Shaw's had a few injuries this season. He is injury-prone, which is a concern. Luke Shaw has been at Manchester United for around eight years, so reflecting on that, he's been a long-serving player. He's got under two years left now on his contract. Alex Tellez, he's also a decent left-back. He's really impressed me under Rangnick. He appeared to be our first-choice left-back under Rangnick. Uh, the reason Manchester United brought Tellez in was to provide competition for Luke Shaw. Manchester United got Tellez from Porto back in 2020. Got him in a deal worth £15.4 million with add-ons included. Um, Harry Maguire, he's not good enough. Uh, Man United could look to sell Maguire in the summer. Um, Harry Maguire is Manchester United's captain. We need to take the captaincy off him. Earlier on this season, a lot of Man United fans were demanding for the captaincy to be taken off Maguire because Maguire's not a leader, but he's going to remain Man United captain till the end of the season. Uh, Maguire uh, was dropped against Watford. Don't know why. Didn't look into it. Uh, Maguire's been at Manchester United over two years now. Manchester United got Maguire from Leicester and we got him for £80 million. He's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment and he's the second most expensive sign at the club behind Pogba. Eric Bailly, you know, he's a decent centre-back but Bailly doesn't get in the team. He lost his place in the team a while ago, plus he's injury-prone, which is a concern. Um, I'm expecting Bay to leave Man United in the summer. Bay has been at Manchester United over five years. Manchester United got him from Villarreal back in 2016. Manchester United paid £30 million for him. Back in April last year, Bailly signed a contract with Man United until 2024. Uh, Raphael Varane, he's a very good centre-back. Uh, most of the time when Varane plays, he seems to make the difference. Varane is regarded as one of the best centre-halves in the world. He's highly experienced and he's got a good pedigree behind him because look at the amount of silverware he won when he was at Real Madrid. Earlier on this season, Varane had illness. He had stomach 
pains, and he's had a couple of injuries since he came in Man United. Man United got Varane last summer from Real Madrid, um, paid £34 million up front, rises up to £41 or £42 million with add-ons. He's under contract to Man United until 2025. There's an option of a further year. Varane needs a world-class centre-half alongside him at Man United. He hasn't got a world-class centre-half alongside him. Because obviously you've got Maguire, that's poor, and obviously you've got Bay that doesn't really get in the team. Uh, Lindelof, you know, he's done well in his last few games, to be fair, but it doesn't change my perception on him. I still don't think he's good enough. Uh, Lindelof has been at Manchester United now over four years. Manchester United got him from Benfica back in 2017, got him for £31 million. Lindelof's under contract to Man United until 2024. Uh, Jones is still at Man United, obviously not good enough. Jones doesn't get in the team anyway. I'm expecting Phil Jones to leave in the summer. Um, in the game against Wolves at Old Trafford earlier on this season, Phil Jones started. But that's only because Maguire picked up an injury. Jones was our best performer against Wolves. That was his first Premier League appearance since January 2020. At one point, he was out with an injury for a while. This season has been his 11th season at Manchester United. So reflecting on that, he's been a long-serving player. His contract at Manchester United expires next year. Aaron wan -Bissaka. I don't think he's good enough, but he's done well in the last few games he's played in. I think defensively, Bissaka's good, but the attacking side of his game is not good. You know, this season has been Aaron wan -Bissaka's third full season at Man United. Man United got Aaron wan -Bissaka from Crystal Palace back in the summer of 2019. Got him for £50 million. Pounds. Uh, Diego Delor, he's our first choice right back under Rangnick and to be fair, Delor has been impressive under Rangnick. Do you think Delor should leave Manchester United in the summer? Because he's been subjected to transfer speculation before. Don't forget last season, Delor had a loan spell with AC Milan, so reflecting on that again, some experience. Manchester United got Delor from Porto. Man United paid around £19 million for him. We brought him in under the Jose Mourinho where a Delors contract at Man United expires next year. Uh, De Gea, obviously our first choice goalkeeper. You know, De Gea is regarded as one of the best goalkeepers in the world. De Gea has been sensational this season. He's now back to his best. De Gea was in goal in the 0-0 draw against Watford. He had nothing to do, but his distribution was poor. Um, not so long ago, he reunited with Atletico Madrid, did De Gea. He didn't have much to do in the game against Atletico Madrid. Uh, prior to the game against Atletico Madrid, De Gea said, I don't see myself away from Manchester United. Don't forget, he got named the Premier League's Player of the Month for January. De Gea's won everything domestically at the football club and he's made over 500 appearances for Man United in all competitions. You know, this season has been his 11th season at Man United. He's been with us since the Ferguson era. His contract at Manchester United expires next year. Dean Henderson, he's Man United's second choice goalkeeper. He's a good keeper, but obviously doesn't really get in goal because De Gea reclaimed that number one spot back last summer. Henderson has only made three appearances this season. Not so long ago, Henderson got arrested for abusing his girlfriend. 
Third choice goalkeeper, Tommy Eaton, obviously doesn't get in goal, he's just a backup. Man United got Tom Eaton on a free transfer from Aston Villa last summer, and I still think Lee Grant is at Man United, he's a what, fourth choice goalkeeper. So, there you go. You know, with the squad we've got, you know, we should be winning the league, or minimum, competing for the league. You know, Manchester United have been in transition for far too long now. The Glazers, we've got to get them out because they've been one of the biggest issues at the club for a long time. You know, the Glazers have owned Manchester United for 16 and a half years. They bought the club for 500 million back in 2005. It was good news from a Man United perspective that Woodward stepped down earlier on this year. Because Woodward was one of the biggest issues at the club for a long time. Woodward was Manchester United's vice chairman for around 17 years. Obviously, our chief executive now is Richard Arnold. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you with. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always. And take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.